BattleBots just announced that they are moving Destructathon dates all the way to December of this year. Now with the news that BattleBots World Championship 8 will be happening in early 2024. And this means that BattleBots Premier Grounds is now opened up for all the way to the end of the year. And we've seen numerous exciting robots sign up, new and old. Well, what's coming up in August? The Combot Collective's here to talk about five exciting robots to see in the battle box very soon. Stay tuned. We're talking about some cool robots here at the Combot Collective. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another TCC news video here at the Combat Collective. Bring everything you want to know from the world of robot combat, from the heavyweight class to the flyweight class. It is BattleBots News Day here once again, finally. I am so excited because BattleBots Proving Ground has now officially been going down all summer, even some in the spring. And uh, I have to say, what BattleBots has done with this permanent venue has impressed me tenfold. In three months of action, we have seen old school designs from old school teams such as Terra Dominator and Maximum Paralysis. We've seen veterans and alternates alike from 2022, machines such as Gigabyte, Horizon, Doom, and Slammo. We've even seen some Monsters of the Deep really turn some heads in this array. And of course, probably the most impressive robot we've seen at Proving Grounds yet. Probably the most impressive robot we've seen this year, our RoboGames champion, Manta. And it looks like we are only getting started. BattleBots have really put together their schedule for the upcoming Proving Ground season, going all the way to December. And I am shocked at some of the names we are going to be seeing inside the Battle Box later this season. We're talking about veteran figures from different eras, robots like Conquering Clown, Swamp Thing, Apex, and even Pinchpoint and Mudhole Bullfrog, who have recently just fought on the same weekend I am recording this video. Speculation, hype, and buzz has flared up like never before in BattleBots, with applicants getting the opportunity to strut their stuff before needing to appear on TV. So here at the Combat Collective, we've officially decided our post-fight rundowns of Proving Grounds that we do almost every week on Robot Combat tonight just aren't enough anymore. We're going to be taking it a step forward here with some monthly previews in detail of the robots entering the Proving Grounds arena. And uh, we're starting it with this August episode, talking about five new robots which are scheduled to make their BattleBots debut this month. We've got cluster bots. We've got new machines from old teams. We've got new machines from new teams. And we even have our first international competitor to appear in the Proving Grounds arena, a machine coming all the way from Canada. Super excited about that. So without further ado, let's take a look at these competitors by order in which they will be appearing at Las Vegas this month. But first, as we always say here at the Combot Collective, everything is subject to change without reason. I mean, shit. The first two robots we're going to be talking about today have already pulled out of a Proving Grounds outing before in the past. Odds are at least one of these five exciting robots will not make the appearance, and we're going to see Overkill or some shit in its place instead. So let's jump into it. These five robots, very exciting, coming from all sorts of areas in North America. But hey, as always here at the Combot Collective, some East Coast robots here. And TCC is sponsored by the East Coast group, RobotsRoomMyLife.com, our longtime sponsor here at TCC for all of this year. RobotsRoomMyLife.com are the merchandise provider for numerous East Coast robot combat teams. Favorites from BattleBots such as Ripperoni, Shredder Bro, Star Child, and of course your NHRL regulars, your mainstays. Pretty much every machine from Team Shredded from the Omega team. Some popular fan favorites like Milk Tank have merchandise on the website. We even got classic NHRL merchandise you can only buy at House of Havoc more often than not, and much more. RobotsRoomMyLife.com also has their own logo merchandise, lifestyle merchandise, bags, um, t-shirts, prints, buttons, the poker chips. They have all sorts of fantastic merchandise you can buy at their website. We shout it out every episode, and we're doing it here. Please check out RobotsRoomMyLife.com, Friends of the Combot Collective, massive supporters, and the Combot Collective, they're massive supporters of these five robots. Now, let's officially jump into it. 
As uh, speaking of subject to change, we start here with a robot we've now previewed on the Combot Collective three times, and maybe the third time will be the charm. It's the old school Texas Virginia connection of Team Boombots with Snakebite, an airbag crusher lifter hybrid we first saw sign up for RoboGames 2023, but had to pull out. We then saw this robot slide up to face Banshee at Proving Grounds, but then again had to pull out. At this point, I can't help but wonder if its performance is going to live up to all this anticipation. But uh, regardless, as it is a Texas robot and it is an old school team, I am still very excited. Um, but we do have one update from when we last saw this robot. It's rendering. Brand new rendering. During the promotional pictures BattleBots put on social media and build up to this Banshee fight that never was, we saw an updated shot of Snakebite which featured the same wide rear wheels at its back base, a modified lifter and crusher combo, but with only one fork instead of two. But perhaps the most noteworthy change on this new Snakebite CAD would be its updated body. When we first discussed this robot on the Applicant Rundown many, many months ago, we all came to the collective conclusion that the long body of snake bite added with how far set back the wheels were, it just felt like a recipe for disaster. Not much, you know, maneuverability for a crusher bot. That's important for a crusher bot. But now we have a changed body, which seems much more feasible. The chassis looks to be about two thirds the length of the original design, or maybe it's just a bit more wide. I'm not sure how they're working it out. But maybe more interesting, we also see that the front wedge built in on the body is now absent with Snakebite now adopting a flat front to go with its new weapon. Um, for me though, the best new addition on this robot has to be the big ass Texas flag laid across the entire top of the robot. You know I love my Texas. Come on now. Well, that's all we got on Snakebite. Not much to be brutally honest, but here's the finally, hopefully, seeing it in action. Its scheduled opponent on the weekend of August 5th and 6th will be another robot we have discussed recently, but only by name because at the time we had no clue what this robot looked like two months ago. We're now finally talking about, in full, Travis T. When we did our first Proving Grounds preview, we had Travis T listed on the schedules, but we had no clue what it could possibly be outside of our understanding that it was a novelty robot. Um, well, when the promotional content came out for Travis T versus Max Paralysis, we finally got to see what this novelty design was, and they were certainly right about it being outside of the box and being very unique. This thing looks insane. We have a picture of it, of course, right now on our corner screen. And the best way I can describe this robot is if we had the old super heavyweight Brainisters of the Triskelion crossed over with Robot Wars Series 2 bot Groundhog. It is a, it's a very scaffolding-like robot with three strange wheel pods and a horizontal spinning disc. And uh, while not confirmed, I do have a theory that these three wheel pods have some sort of articulation that would allow parts of Travis T to move the body up and down, kind of like a low rider. Um, in theory, this could be used to angle strikes to hit high, low, maybe even to hit hard reach areas. But with it being such an unproven, flimsy robot, that feels like it would be more trouble than it's worth, but who really knows? But when it turned July 1st, when Travis T was supposed to fight Maximum Paralysis, it turned out the drive pods were the least of its problems. When it showed up, it had to withdraw from its only fight due to a burnt weapon motor in testing their only weapon motor. And you know, being layered with spares is a serious thing Greg Munson and Trey Roski look for when deciding the new field. So this was honestly not much of a good look. Hopefully a veteran roboteer like Captain Kurt Gruger, who last competed in 2005 with his lightweight horizontal spinner 2x4, can figure this out. I mean, obviously, a 60-pounder almost 15 years ago is a far cry to make even comparisons to a modern 250-pounder. But then again, maybe not with this wacky classical design. Maybe Kurt has something in mind that we just don't. Very excited, though, for Travis T versus Snakebite. Hopefully, these robots show up and don't pull out because, you know, two old-school designs. We just saw it with Pinchpoint and Mudhole Bullfog. It can be a lot of fun. Moving forward, though, on the 19th and 20th of August, we'll see Proving Grounds regular and TCC number 109 ranked robot Doom return to the bow box. And while we've seen Alejandro Pena's Hammersaw fight full body spinners, suplexers, and even Comedy Central legends, we have never seen it fight a cluster bot. But that's exactly what's coming that weekend, as it will be a battle between a RoboGames 2023 heavyweight and two highly acclaimed RoboGames middleweights. 
Yes, with huge shades of past collaboration clusters such as The Swarm, two legendary California Roboteers, and Team Bad Kitties Martin Mason and Hardcore Robotics Ray Billings are set to unify forces for the first time in their history to captain both drivers' first ever cluster bot. We're talking about Martin Mason's Cat Kong and Ray Billings' Mortician, two veteran 120-pound robots which don't have a proper team name right now, only going by Mortician plus Cat Kong. Though personally, I have been calling it Catition online. That name just sort of rolls off the tongue. It's fun to say. Now, like Snakebite, we have talked about these robots in detail before during our Robo Games 2023 previews. But a whole event for these two robots have happened since, and we were talking about them separately. So now let's take another look at first the older robot Mortician. Mortician is, as you may expect, a full-size version of the team's flagship robot Tombstone and has been in action as long as Tombstone also, crazy enough, having debuted all the way back in the year 2004 at RoboOlympics. Mortician has won multiple silver medals and even a gold medal early on in its career, but it did disappear for an entire decade before returning fully rebuilt for this year's RoboGames event, as uh, Ray Billings' son, Justin Billings, was behind the wheel. Justin exhibited some shaky driving once again, kind of like what we saw during um, Remar's All-Stars, but he did hold his own, putting up a destructive outing, but overall did fall 1-2 and two over the weekend with a sole victory over Who's Your Daddy Now and defeats to a pair of podium-placing robots in BMF and copyright infringement. And uh, speaking of that 2023 middleweight top three, the robot which took silver, sitting between BMF and copyright infringement, would be Mortician's partner, Cat Kong. Much like Mortician, Cat Kong shares numerous similarities to its heavier sibling, Mad Catter, but does hold the key difference of being only a two-wheel drive robot. Cat Kong has been driven at two RoboGames events by top-tier driver Calvin Eba, though due to BattleBots' rules, I'd assume that Martin Mason would have to be the one behind the sticks for its outing inside the BattleBox. I'm not exactly sure how it works. Sometimes BattleBots rules are a little bit wishy-washy. But uh, in total here, we have a high-tier horizontal spinner and a high-tier vertical spinner out of the semi-active middleweight class. And uh, usually, cluster bots get written off pretty quickly in the world of 250-pound action. But there has been quite a bit of buzz lately for this duo and the duo of the twins, a cluster bot we will discuss in a future video. Two nibbling nightmares will have plenty of weak spots to focus on with a now-fledgling robot such as Doom. The real challenge for Ketishin is going to be driving, I think. Billings and Mason are both veteran drivers, but how are they going to do coexisting inside the arena as one? There's a lot to be questioned there. Are they going to go the way of, you know, Jaeger and 2019 Gemini, whose piloting was awful? Or is it going to be a bit more like the modern Gemini that uh, put things together a little bit better in uh, their final season? But now, moving on, fortunately for our final two robots, that whole cluster bot issue won't be as much of a problem. We're going back to full-size machines for our final pair of robots here, and we have two machines which will share the arena twice over the weekend of August 26th and 27th. And you know, I'd say out of all the five machines we are discussing here today, the fights between these two robots may be the most likely to dictate a robot in the field of 50 for World Championship 8. Both Roundhouse and Orbitron have had much hype and much anticipation behind them before we've even seen them fully assembled. Numerous Robot Combat fans have listed these machines as robots to make it into 2024's big event. As we first start here with a favorite of TCC co-host Pori Nogs in Team RoboGym, who are Indiana's sole 250-pound Robot Combat team. And after two unsuccessful seasons with the now-retired deadlift, the gym bros from the Midwest are now looking to put together something much, much more destructive. Roundhouse is directly inspired by the team's 30-pound undercutter of the same name, a robot which recently placed first at Champaign, Illinois' Robo Brawl event, an event we covered in full on our YouTube channel in a past breakdown. In that event, we saw Roundhouse rip apart some very game opponents while suffering very few internal issues of its own, something that the team hopes to replicate at a much larger scale. This 250-pound version of Roundhouse will still carry the fun gym equipment themed deadlift had, handlebars and all, but there are a few differences which separate it from its much older, smaller brother. These new changes are all about versatility and flashiness, which you gotta have in BattleBots, 
Starting with, as we all know, numerous undercutters like Valkyrie, like Rotator, will sometimes operate as an overcutter, flipping the robot upside down to begin a fight. Usually teams aren't the best configured or prepared for when they go into this setup. I mean, just look at Valkyrie lately. But Roundhouse has taken a page from the Malice playbook as RoboGym have assembled a set of forks exclusively for overcutting action. And when in that traditional undercutting configuration, these forks are replaced with an added shield of armor up front. This seems like a smart move, but you know what every awesome robot needs to get on TV? A flamethrower. And yes, just like Deadlift, our boy Roundhouse is rocking a front flamethrower designed to combo attacks with that deadly horizontal spinning blade. Probably, just like Forinog, this is the one robot I'm most excited to see in terms of just pure competition. We need more horizontal spinners. But finally, we discuss Orbitron, who, like I mentioned, will be the first ever international robot to appear at Proving Grounds, making the trip to Vegas all the way from Ontario, Canada. Orbitron is built by a team of first robotics engineers coming out of the University of Waterloo, and at first look, Orbitron has huge shades and vibes of a modernized counter-revolution, bringing an upgrade such as it being more compact, it has the long front forks, a better stream mech, etc. But what this team really brings to the table is all the wild things happening within this machine. Coming from a competition such as FRC, Team Orbitron is seriously looking to harness the power of artificial intelligence to make its machine more precise than any robot has before. This is a task that has been attempted and failed by numerous robots such as Chomp, Glitch, and Zumba in the past, but I am quite intrigued by Orbitron's shot at this advancement in the sport. Orbitron is armed with a set of eight retracting sensor cameras designed with human eyes in mind so the robot is able to understand depth and location of its opponent no matter where it is inside the arena. Plus, it can even anticipate where a robot may drive in the future for more precise, less predictable attacks. The team has also brought up that they want to have ChatGPT prepare strategies against other robots. But having seen ChatGPT in action, that seems a lot more like a gimmick as opposed to the 8 camera system. That system definitely has legs. It seems promising. I love the internal map it assembles for itself to use inside the arena. I appreciate its ability to anticipate attacks, but I really, really do fear for the fragility of this robot. It looks like there's a lot of significant moving parts on this machine, such as those 8 retractable sensor cameras. I feel like those are going to be biting quite a bit into the weight allowance, but I'm not too fully certain on that. If it works, great. It could be revolutionary, but it's going to be a test of durability, and that's exactly what one hell of a horizontal spinner in Roundhouse should be able to provide in Orbitron's first ever fight. But there we go, guys. Five robots up, five robots down is what's going to hopefully be six exciting fights happening over to cross the month of August. You know, robots such as Doom making their comeback to the arena. The Clusterbot, our first Proving Grounds Clusterbot, Mortician and Cat Kong. Two OGs coming at it. You know, I want to see BMF join them. That would be like the proper swarm get together. Two, three veteran roboteers mixing it up, becoming one solid force. That's going to be, that would be very good, but you know. Still very excited for Mortician and Cat Kong. Wouldn't mind seeing the Jaeger style cluster bot combination though with that. Um, Roundhouse, we talked a lot about Roundhouse this year. RoboGym in general, very excited about them. Orbitron, first international robot. I've been begging for some more, you know, artificial intelligence in the world of robot combat. So many people are critical of robots because they are not really robots. I don't agree with that. Definition says they are, but... You know, AI in robot combat, it just seems like a match made in heaven. But I digress. Out of these fights, you know, it's going to be a big test for Doom to try to finally pick up some wins against a cluster bot, a weaker opponent there. Um, it's going to be a big test for Travesty and Snakebot just to show up to the battle box. We want to see these robots in action, these old school designs, but they got to make it here first. They got to make it past safety. And then, you know, Orbitron versus Roundhouse. Those are two big money, big budget robots. I am so stoked. I think one of them will be in Battle Boss 2024. We're going to have to see who. Very excited to see that. 
So that's about all we got to talk about here at the Combot Collective. I am your host, as always, Sterling Brown. You can find me on Instagram at SterlingTXTG. And as for the Combot Collective itself, you can find the Combot Collective on Facebook and Instagram. Link in the description below. We have a Discord server with numerous robot combat teams and fans chatting it up, sharing their creations, whether it be fan content or robot combat content. And we also post our video uploads there first. And you're already here on the YouTube page. If you like what we're seeing here, Please give this video a like, a comment on what you think about these five upcoming Proving Grounds competitors. And hey, if you really like it, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell icon. We're trying to get to 600 subscribers. Hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have to see how it goes. But thank you all so much for watching. Thank you so much for Robots Ruin My Life for sponsoring TCC as always. And uh, shout outs to BattleBots. Hopefully you guys can check out these fights in person. We will have ticket links. For BattleBots Destructathon in the description below, go down there. Check out robots such as Whiplash, Diablo, Bronco, Chopper, Witch Doctor, Hypershock, and of course the BattleBots Proving Grounds competitors themselves, the legendary Build Wire, all those people, that great cast. We're going to wrap it up though here on this TCC News video. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you all next time for more Robot Combat tonight, more breakdowns, and more TCC News. This was the Combat Collective. Find us on Instagram and Discord.